hope you're all well. So today we're going to look at print and cut and we're going to look at ways you can work with print and cut and also features of print and cut and how to make it all a little bit easier for you to navigate. So the first thing we're going to look at is text, nice and easy. So I'm just going to grab a text box and I'm going to come up to my fonts and I'm just going to pick any font. So let's go with a child's year. I'm then going to write my word. So this is currently set to cut. Now if I want it to print nice and easy, I can come up to fill here and select the drop down menu and I can select print. I can change the colour if I want to, so let's just go to advanced and we can select a kind of colour that wouldn't normally come up, so let's go for that one. And I could leave it like that. Now, if I simply do cut and print, it is going to print this as you see it, but it will cut out all of these individual letters. We may not always want that. The other thing is before I turn it into a print, I can play with it. So for example, the style, if I wanted a writing style of font, for example, I could do that and then I could turn it to a print and it will print, but it will cut those out. So very, very small. You're going to really struggle if you're just going to cut that out. Of course, if I wanted lots of different colours, I can go to advanced and ungroup to letters or I can come to my layers panel and ungroup. And then I can select each of those individual letters and I can colour them whatever colours I want. So once I'm happy, I can then change them. They're currently set to a cut and I can change them to a print. However, because there is no background, again, if I send this and I print it and I then get the machine to cut, it's going to cut out all of these individual pieces. So if I go to shapes and I grab any shape, so this time I've chosen a square and I've unlocked it and I've just turned it into a rectangle, I'm going to change the background to white because my computer won't print white, but if I choose another colour, please be aware that it will print that colour. So the only colour it won't print is white. So I've got my box and I've got my text, which I've turned back to a just a normal cut. And I'm going to bring these into my box. And if I want them to keep their shape on the canvas, I can group them. At this point, however, I don't want to attach them because if I attach them, they'll all turn into one colour when they're set to a cut. So if I group them, they'll stay as they are on the canvas. I can then highlight both my text and my shape. And if I come down to the bottom of my layers panel, you'll see it says flatten. If I flatten, that then turns my text into a print, but I am flattening them to a shape. So this time, rather than cutting out the individual letters, what will happen is it will print my text, but it will cut out only my shape. Now, if we go to our layers, you'll see it's currently telling us it's too big. The maximum size for print and cut is 6.75 by 9.25 inches. If your canvas is set to centimetres, it will also give you those dimensions in centimetres. So in centimetres, it's 17.148 by 23.500. So if you're working in inches or centimetres, it will give you the correct size. If you don't know how to change, if you come up to your settings, select settings, and you can change from metric, which is centimetres, to imperial, which is inches, and vice versa. 
So I've just typed in Halloween and to start with I'm going to deal with cut images. So I've chosen some cut images down at the bottom here and they're all different and they'll behave differently. So we'll insert them and we'll have a look at them. So if we look at this image here, you can see from the layers panel, it's three layers and they're all cut. Now one of those layers, this layer here, is a complete background. So if I flatten this, it will print it as you see it, but it will cut out only that background shape. Now if I hide that one and hide that one, so I'm only dealing with this one, if I flatten it or turn it into a print by using the fill option, it will print it, but it will come in and cut away all of these recess pieces, even if I've flattened it, because I'm not flattening it to anything. So if I want something to be cut around, I need to make sure that I'm actually flattening it to a background shape. Otherwise, it doesn't matter whether I flatten or turn it to a fill, it will still cut out these pieces. So before I flatten it, I can actually play with the layers. So for example, if I select this layer here, I can come up to my colors and I can go to advanced and I can change the color to whatever I want. And exactly the same with this one. Then once I'm happy with it, I can highlight, come down to the bottom of my layers and flatten. So it will print it as you see it, but it will only cut that outline. And if we now look at the layers, you can see that we've got that outline circle, which is what will be cut and the inner is what will be printed. So if we look at this one, you can see that there is lots and lots of layers here. But we do actually have some background layers. So if we just hide that black and then the dark grey, it will show us that light grey. So what will happen with this one is it will cut out the outline and it will cut out the eye outlines but anything in there, as long as we flatten it, it will just print them. And I can, I don't have to have those extra layers if I don't want them. And again, if I want to come in and change the colour on these, I can. So I can change the colour to whatever I want. Then once I'm happy, I'm going to highlight and flatten and you'll see the outline. So it will cut this outline all the way around the eyes, around my letters, and it will follow that outline, but anything within there will just be printed. So this is a text one that we got, and you'll see there's no solid background. So each of these individual pieces will be cut out. Even if I go to flatten, because there's nothing in the background there, it will still cut those out individually. So if I want them to not be cut out, I need to flatten them to a shape. This one is the same as the other one. It's got that background shape. So all I would need to do is flatten, it will print it, and then it will just cut out that shape. Exactly the same with this one. If I flatten it, it will cut out the outline of my word and then it will cut out the outlines of my bats. Now, if I want my bats to actually cut out as part of my word, if I ungroup, If I click on my layer, I want that layer, and I hold down my shift key and click on the other bat layer, it will select both of them. I can duplicate, and I can just bring the duplicate down a little bit. Now if I click on this one, and I go to my contour, I can just remove 
that bat and the same with that one contour it away and then with this one this is the bat I want so this time I'm going to contour away this lower bat so if I bring the bat over and maybe put him there and of course I could change the colors I can highlight and flatten and they'll be slightly attached to my word but anything else will be cut out so it'll cut out the middle of this because it's blank but it will cut out the background going all the way round the bat all the way round do the bat until you've got a complete cutout so let's say I've got images like this which are going to cut out so for example with the web it will cut out all the lines fine if I'm doing it as a big print and cut but if I'm doing it small I'm going to end up in a bit of a mess so what you can't do in design space is create a shadow layer that doesn't exist so if you want for example a white extra layer going around the outside of this you can only create that in design space with images that have a back layer already you can create it using an external program and I will show that in a, another tutorial and that's using Inkscape but what you can do is prevent design space from actually cutting all of these so the easiest way to do it is to duplicate the image they are both currently set to cut which is absolutely fine I'm going to go to my contour which is down at the bottom here and with this one I'm simply going to hide all contours that then gives me that basic background shape if I change the color on it so white obviously white doesn't print but if I wanted say a slightly different color so let's go for a more gray color I can send this to the back so I can arrange and center back bring this one over highlight both of them align and center and then I'm going to flatten so I'm flattening my image to my background so it will print it as you see it but rather than cutting all of these inner pieces it will now only cut that outside area exactly the same as this one so if I duplicate it I can get the duplicate and go to contour and I've got a couple of options with this one I could hide all contours which means I just end up with that solid shape I can change the color of it so this time let's do white arrange and send to back and then that can sit behind I can flatten and so everything in the boo and all the little inners of the spider's web I lost what it was called then you will it will not cut those out it will just cut out the outline pieces so let's say I want the outside of the web but the web itself I want to be solid so if we then go back into contour this time if we actually click and remove the piece it will then be cut out so I can do that for each of them just by selecting so I can have it like that if I want and then bring it over and flatten so it will cut out in between my letter and my spider web but the actual spider web won't be cut out so I've got a few options to create a background so that if it's an intricate cut I'm not going to end up in a right old mess print and cut image which I've brought into design space and again it's going to cut in between all of this that spider web and on a small sticker sheet it's going to be a bit of a nightmare so all I'm going to do is duplicate it and this time it duplicates as a print and cut so I need to change the fill from print to no fill 
and that will then change it to a cut. I can then contour. On this one, I'm simply going to hide all contours. I can arrange and center back and I can change the color if I want to. I can bring it over to here, highlight both, align and center. If I wanted to add some text in there, I can, and then I can flatten it so it will only cut out that shape. So you can actually get around intricate cuts in Design Space if you're creating stickers. If you want the outline where an outline doesn't exist, you need to do that in an external program. And as I say, I will do that in another tutorial. I go to Art Type and I select Print Then Cut. It will bring up images that are already set to print and cut. So I can come in and choose a few of these. So let's just choose some of these ones. Now the only thing with choosing a ready done print and cut image is that you cannot change the colors. So it will come in with the colors already chosen. And if I try and change them by being clever and changing the fill to no fill, it will just change it to a solid cut. And if I change it back to a print, it will still have that solid cut. So you need to make sure that if you're choosing a print and cut image, you're happy with the colors. If you want to be able to change the colors before you turn it to a print and cut, then you want to be working with cut files. So I found this Halloween watercolour. I really like the leaves and the hat actually. And you'll see that it's JPEG and PNG. So I'm going to download those. So you'll see from the file there are PNGs and JPEGs. So I'm just going to select those and move them to my pictures so I can see them easily and find them easily. Now if I come back into Design Space and I go to Upload, Upload Image and Browse, I can then select whichever images I want. So I'm going to bring in this pumpkin as a JPEG first. So a JPEG is a flat picture image. Always choose a complex. If you choose simple, you'll change the way it looks. And again, moderately complex, you'll also change it as well. So always choose a complex if you're bringing it in as a print and cut. Go to continue. You need to make sure with a JPEG that you're removing the background. So let's just zoom out. And if I select, it will remove that. Now, if I want pieces of the inside removed, I can, or because I'm doing it as a print, I can just leave them white. So it's completely up to you. If we go to continue, you'll see this is what it will look like as a cut. And this is what it will look like as a print and cut. You can give it a name and a tag and then you can save. I can select it and insert to my canvas. It will cut the outline because I've created the outline by removing the white area and it will print it as you see it. But I cannot change this because it is a flat picture, a photograph. I can't change anything about it. Again, if we go to upload, upload image, browse, this time we'll bring in a PNG and we'll bring in the witch's hat. We're going to select complex. We don't need to remove the background with a PNG. The background is already removed. So we can go to continue and you'll see this is the cut. So this is what will cut and this is what will print. So always look at the cut because that will tell you exactly what is going to be cut away. So it's going to cut this spider web and the inside of the spider's legs as well. But the rest of it is just a solid cut. Make sure you select it as a print and cut give it a name and tag it and then save. 
So exactly the same, I can't change the colours on this. Well I can, but I couldn't do it in sections. So I couldn't change the belt buckle or the hat. I simply would come up, it says original artwork but I can change to a colour or pattern. We're going to look at pattern in the next video. But if I change the colour, it's going to create it as a solid colour. So if you are bringing it in as a JPEG or a PNG, then there's not a whole lot that you can do to change that image. So this one's really sweet and we can see it's an SVG, which is what we want. So I'm going to select it and download it. I want the solid image, so I'm going to select that and I'm going to select the SVG and send that to my pictures. So if we go to upload, upload image, browse, find the SVG and open. It brings it straight in. We can't change it at this point. We can't do anything apart from give it a name and a tag and save it. So we can insert image. And if we look down our layers panel, you'll see that we've got lots of layers there and I can come in and change those if I want to. So say for example, I want all my letters a different color. I can just select them in my layers panel they're currently set to cut, but if I change them to a print at this point, I can then change the colours individually. So again with this one, if I come in and change it to a print, I can then select the colour that I want. So I've only changed some of them to a print because I'm going to flatten this anyway. You'll see we've got our areas here and we've still got pieces that are cut. So if I ungroup all of this, those I should just be able to delete. I can then remove these bubbles as well or equally I could actually just bring them into the cauldron if I wanted to. And then I can highlight and I can flatten and then that will just give me my solid outline cut. So we're going to go and print this and cut it. And then I've got two more videos for you to watch after this one. There is a video on how you actually use pattern fill, which is an amazing feature of Design Space. And then there's a video on how you create stickers as well. And I'll link to those in the description below. So we're going to go and print this and then cut it. And we're just going to be using Cricut printable vinyl today, which I absolutely love working with. So we can go to make it. So you'll see our preview looks like this and you'll always have this border. This is the scan lines for print and cut. We can go to continue your maker or one of your explore machines so the air for example the only machine you can't do print and cut on is joy so I'm going to send to printer I'm going to select my printer now I can choose whether to have the bleed on or off so the bleed has changed recently so it used to be when you had the bleed on you'd end up with this fuzzy looking border all around and it was basically a cut buffer so if print and cut was off slightly which it can be it can be off slightly and that's expected um the buffer was there to obviously so it didn't look but it wasn't the best it was it was really fuzzy and weird they've now changed it so it actually blends as part of the image so it just makes the image slightly bolder which is brilliant because if you are then slightly out of line you're not going to really notice it now i always choose to have my system dialog on and then i select print because i've got my system dialog selected it's going to come up with my printer settings so i need to make sure that i've got the right printer selected and then I can go to preferences 
Now I do this because if I keep my printer set to plain paper and I put in printable vinyl or I put in printable fabric or printable sticker paper, any of the printables, it will get jammed. It happens all the time. So I change the media type from plain paper to photo papers and I always choose photo paper plus glossy too and I've never touch wood had an issue uh, with this printer with using printables if I choose that setting. I can also change the print quality from standard to high and then I can select OK and I can then choose to print. So I've got some Cricut printable vinyl here. It's got a plain side and then a gridded side and you need to make sure that you are placing it correctly into your printer. Every printer is different so you'll need to know how your printer likes to have its paper or whatever it is you're putting it in fed. For my cut setting I'm just going to browse all materials. I'm going to actually search for print and then we are using a printable vinyl and we know it's Cricut because it's got the C logo next to it. So that's now printed. Now all Cricut printables are for inkjet. I'm using an inkjet but you can find alternatives for laser printers if you've got a laser printer. But most printables will be for inkjet. You want to make sure you leave this to dry for about 10 minutes just to make sure that you don't smudge anything. I always use a green mat and you want to make sure that you're placing it on your mat in the direction it is on your preview. So if it's going that way you need to make sure it's going that way and if it's going this way you need to make sure it's going this way. It doesn't need to be perfect against the line so you can put it on but you don't want it miles away either. I like to use my Cricut brayer to secure it to my mat rather than a scraper. So all machines now come calibrated for print and cut so the only time you'll ever need to calibrate is if you're having issues with your print and cut or if you're constantly moving your machine from one area to another. You want to make sure that you're in a bright area but you also want to make sure that you haven't got light shining directly on the sensor which is under here. So try and make sure you're nice and bright but you haven't got light directly on here because not enough light sometimes means it can't scan and sometimes if it's got too much light and it's got light reflecting on it it won't scan so it does like to be temperamental sometimes but normally if it comes back and says I can't find the scan it's either because you're too bright you're not bright enough or you haven't got enough ink in your printer and your sensor lines aren't strong enough. You'll only need to use a fine point blade with the Cricut printable vinyl. And what's going to happen is I'm going to load the mat. It's going to start scanning. So it's going to have a little light come on under here and it's going to scan these lines and then it will start cutting for me. So I can load my mat. I can press my flashing C and it's going to scan those lines for me and then it's going to start cutting. Now I chose to have my bleed on so it's going to cut around and ha will have a little bit of a border but if I'd chosen bleed off I wouldn't obviously have a border when it cuts. Those of you that know how the old uh, border used to look will know there's a big difference now because you can't actually see it. Before it was really obvious and really fuzzy.
Once it's finished, I can unload my mat. I always like to turn my mat over and then remove my product that way. Try not to over bend your mat though because sometimes they can snap so you might find it easier to do it in small sections. Obviously I've not used a whole sheet, there's a bit of wastage on here but I'm just going to show you how we actually remove. I'm going to use my true control knife uh, to weed, I normally do. You shouldn't actually use these ones to weed with uh, because these haven't got the coating on so they do get sticky um, and you end up with glue residue from vinyl and iron on and so on and so forth. But I love using my true control as a weeding and the new true controls that are available in the States, they're not available here but they are in the States, they've got a special coating on so they are great for weeding um, but the ones we've got here technically they're not for weeding but I actually have four true controls I think, two are for uh, weeding and two are for other things. So I'm just going to use this because it is my go-to tool. And you'll be able to see as we pull away that border that we've got. Try and do it without screwing it up so you can actually see the border. So you can see that very small outline border that we've got going which acts as a buffer and as I say I much prefer this to the old one. And then we've got our vinyl there. I don't know what I'm doing with him but I'll do something with him. There's two more videos to come after this one. Uh, so we've got a video on pattern fill which is amazing, it's one of my favourite things to do uh, with print and cut so we're going to look at pattern fill. And then we've got another tutorial, which is how we create sticker sheets. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again soon. Bye.